What if you knew you were more likely to get very sick if infected with COVID or you may not get very sick at all? The Baton Rouge General Hospital says the results of a new study confirms a taste test that centers around the research of a Baton Rouge doctor can predict COVID-19 outcomes. It's a major update to a story we first brought you in mid-September. Remember the taste test pioneered by Dr. Henry Barham of Baton Rouge and the Baton Rouge General Medical Center? Basically, I'll just give you a couple of strips of paper and with each one, you just basically lay it on your tongue and suck on it to try to induce a taste. And then you tell me, do you taste sweet, salt, bitter, or nothing? I didn't taste a thing. He gave me the test in our first report. And when I didn't sense any taste, that put me in a group of people labeled as non-tasters at high risk for severe problems if infected with COVID-19. Turns out that Barham, a rhinologist who spent years studying the relationship between taste receptors and sinus problems, was on to something big. There's confirmation now that this seemingly simple taste test can predict COVID-19 outcomes and severity. Or has the potential to take away some of the um, scary parts of a novel virus. You know, you hear these, these stories of, of young people who get really sick without comorbidities um, and, you know, other people who have comorbidities who seem to do fine. And there's this fear out there where you have family members or you have friends who uh, got very sick from the disease and you didn't really know why. And you have some people that, that don't get it with, with seemingly high exposure and some of it doesn't make sense. It looks like the non-taster group tests positive for COVID more frequently and have uh, much more severe and longer duration of symptoms, specifically the average duration of symptoms in the non-taster group was 23 and a half days or three and a half weeks um, versus the super taster group, which the average duration was around five days. At the time I took the test, Barham told me further testing could actually show I had the genetic makeup of a taster, but with age, my genetic receptors had dulled. This past weekend, at a holiday gathering with my siblings, Barham, who is my nephew by marriage, got on a FaceTime call as we all lined up to take the test. My sister, his mother-in-law, administered it. One difference, though, from my first test, Barham told me to drink black coffee just before. And the result... Oh! Oh! Yeah! Look at him. This is like totally different. Barham says the black coffee stimulated my genetic receptors. I am a taster after all. According to this data, better equipped if I got infected. And this has been a, a really um, an interesting project to find in the middle of a pandemic which has uh, dramatically changed our world. It, it has been, the, the findings have been incredible. You're the one who put this to the test first, though. What was the nugget that made you devise this system? When COVID first started, um, I kept dealing with um, a lot of COVID positive patients doing airway surgery where presumably high exposure um, with daily exposure in the um, in patients in the operating room in the COVID ICU um, in clinic, we were seeing people with active COVID um, and I, I never got it. And so if someone were truly to have protection to a novel virus, it would have to be something with innate immunity. Uh, presumably it would have to be something with innate immunity, which is something that you're born with. The potential importance of this is the predictability of one's infection or one's reaction should they get COVID-19. People who are most at risk of getting a severe and prolonged course of this illness should be first in line to get the vaccine. People who are not or would appear to have a much shorter and easier course should allow the, the others who have the potential to get more sick uh, to get the vaccine. We're trying to figure out now how to administer this test on a um, global or, you know, on a much larger scale. Um, I think we're close in um, figuring out how to do that, but we will continue to follow our data, continue to go through the peer review process to find any potential holes in the study. And as soon as it is available to get all of the details out to the public, 
The low cost of this taste test is another bonus. From an altruistic standpoint, I think that this test is beautiful, that you have the potential to predict uh, severity and duration of symptoms of a novel virus with an inexpensive and easily administered test. Dr. Barham says a taste test for the flu is in the works. If you want to know more about the test, we've got a link on our website to his clinic, lpb.org slash SWI.